Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Las Vegas. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Filled with wrestling news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises from inside the squared circle. Now, let's bring on the tag team of Andrew Fish Fame, Joe DeFalco, and your host, Mark Hoke. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. It has been a wrestling, wrestling, wrestling last 10 days for all of us, to say the least, here on the Mark Hoke Show. Holy cow. I mean, and I've got more to go. I think we all do, actually. We're going to be pretty pretty busy in here. Thank you for joining us for the best in pro wrestling news and entertainment. I am Mark Hoke. Very happy to have you joining us here on KDON 101.5 FM and that Odyssey app. And if you're listening out there and you haven't downloaded the Odyssey app, what are you doing? I mean, you know, obviously you can just listen to us, which is great. But tons of amazing programming from KDON and so many others from around the country. Great app. So make sure you download that today. Brian Ronovich in today. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, Mark. How are you? I'm all right. <laughs> Definitely a lot of wrestling going on, that's oh, for sure. I I don't know if I've had a busier wrestling 10 days in my life that I have had these last two weekends. Well, have you enjoyed it? I, I'm having a blast. There you go. This has been unbelievable. Uh, we're still waiting for Joe DeFalco to connect, of course, from future stars of wrestling. Of course, Brian does Las Vegas wrestling scene. If there's anything going on wrestling, like if two kids are down the street in a backyard fight with a you know a couple of light tubes and a trampoline, they're there. Yeah, it, and it's funny because it's not always because of me. I'll get something from Dino Marks who kind of handles our underground stuff, and he'll if he sees something like that, he'll definitely send me some. Hey, think I should? Uh, you think I should head down to the backyard and? Uh, <laughs> Watch these two kids wrestle. Oh, God. Yeah, he's, he's up for everything. It is a great, great site. So make sure you check that out. And and by the way, I got to thank my daughter, Amanda, who has been just an absolute trooper Rockstar, over, right? over the past couple of weeks. She has been so helpful. She's going to be helping us again today. Awesome. Because we don't have one guest. We don't have two. But. Not even three. Quattro. Quattro. We have we have gone into the foursome as we're going to be having on today. Uh, four guys whose careers are just really starting to take off. And it is very exciting uh, that we're going to have Lights, Camera, Faction on. The champs. Man, they just took over FSW and... Just had an appearance uh, on um, Monday on uh, AEW Dark Elevation, mm-hmm. where they in got Arizona. to. Yep, they got to. They're down. Made the trip down to Phoenix, and I heard that trip, by the way, was pretty crazy. Yeah. So we're gonna get to talk to them about that, but we're gonna welcome the FSW champ Ice Williams. We're gonna welcome Action Braxton. We're gonna welcome the tag team champs Fresco and Watson, and pray to God we don't get beat up. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, we don't want that to happen. No, no. I mean, they there, there was belt hitting last night, so I, yeah. I you know, so I, I don't know if uh, we want to, we want to make them mad because because no, no. they are not afraid to take a disqualification defeat. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to eat the FSW heavyweight championship. Well, I'll do it once. I'll do it one time. I'll, I'll take the <laughs> shot. Leave me in a bloody well, pool. Well, I mean, the ring. you were uh, you were stuck in finishers uh, yesterday. Yeah, from what I saw. Yeah i I had a great time over at the Vegas Toy Show, and by the way, it's still going on. So if you want to go over there today, what an amazing time! Plus, there's a car show going on too. Is, is Sergeant Slaughter back today too? Sergeant Slaughter is back today, so you guys can go over and. He has some of the coolest toys on that stand that you can buy and sign. 
Oh, like wow. there's a, and I know he mentioned it at the end of the show, but he had some GI Joes and he sold a couple of those are old GI Joes that are like five hundred bucks. Wow. With the you know with the you know the auto, you know with the autograph and everything, but he had a legend set where it was him. You you remember the legend killer? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lot. There's mm-hmm. one with him and Randy Orton. I remember him talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just and you know, great photos and everybody's having a blast. And I got to tell you, nicest guy in the world. Oh, he is. If if, oh. if you wouldn't have uh, stopped him last week, he'd probably still be telling his stories. No, we would we would have ruined all of. Well, we wouldn't have ruined all of K Don's programming because <laughs> it would have been fun. I'd have been here for a week. Yeah, but yeah, definitely. Yeah, we we'd still be going. It would have looped oh, yeah. into today. But uh, Sarge is going to be over there, and if you want to stop by, just go to VegasToyShow dot com. You can still get tickets, and I want to thank Steve Johnston who set all that up for us. You know, for everybody getting the tickets. Uh, yeah, thank you. I did the uh, the opening uh, live stream that they had set up. Got to meet Mad Mike and <laughs> SRT Jovita to uh, do that interview before Sarge attacked me. Yeah, I saw the vi- I saw the photo photographic evidence. Yes, I got uh, I got clutched, and yeah. they got and they got clutched again later in the yeah. day. Went over there with my friend Chad Holloway, who won the won the photo op, and Sarge took the time to put me in it again. By the way, first one was a little light. Yeah, he was being gentle, you know, because <laughs> had that been in a wrestling ring, it would have been devastating. But uh, he took it easy on me. The second one, uh, not so much. Had a little more meaning. Not to so it. much, and 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 we we now have Joe DeFalco with us. So Joe is here, Mister DeFalco. Uh, how are you, sir? Uh, he's muted. We'll we'll get him on here in just a second. Hang on. Uh, I see the issue. I gotta I gotta press some buttons. So bear with me here, guys. But let's uh, let's let's get Joe DeFalco on here. That should that should help you out a little bit, Joe. How are you? All right. I guess it's working. All right. I I, I apologize. I failed on my engineering job. I produced the show too. So my bad. <laughs> but but we've got Joe on the show too, and. And Joe, big big night for you at uh, FSW. Wow, terrific show yesterday, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're, we're moving forward. You know, we've gotten some great additions. You know, a guy you know well, Danny Limelight, uh, uh, brought in Slice Boogie, who they were champions in MLW. You know, they were tag champions, and he had been out. He tore apart his Achilles. And, you know, he's still not 100%, but it was his first match back in seven months and and definitely a great addition to the roster. And so we're pretty excited about what we got moving forward. We got a lot of big things happening. So, yeah, it was a terrific card last night. And we're going to we're going to talk about uh, everything that happened uh, yesterday, too, of course, with the lights, camera faction as the boys will be in studio for the second hour. So that should be a lot of fun. We're looking forward to that. Uh, I, by the way, uh, I have an announcement to make. Are you ready, guys? Because our our gang from the station put in for media credentials for a certain event taking place in Los Angeles. And it looks like there will be a live remote of the Mark Hoke show at WrestleMania. Awesome. So, uh, so we're the the station staff and I are going to go down there, and so we'll all be getting something together. We're kind of putting it all together tomorrow a little bit, but the Mark Hoke Show will be at WrestleMania 39 in Los Angeles. Congratulations! Yeah, so that's very cool. Yeah, so we'll all be doing a fun show wherever we are, and it's going to be a blast. So, yeah. so we're very excited to be headed to WrestleMania. And and guys, believe it or not, it's my first one. My first WrestleMania. Yeah. That's kind of sad and pathetic when you think about that. I've never gone. But I've never been to a live mania. Yeah. Well, next year, Philadelphia, when we have time, we're, we're going to pack everybody up. We're going to go. What? You're, 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 cr- you're cringing. Is that where right? it is next year? Philadelphia? Yeah, I believe so. So, okay. yeah, just, um, but yeah, so we're very excited about that as well. Um, and also, by the way, got to get some thanks into Ross Foreman from Impact Wrestling as well, because uh, you know got got in there and uh, got to have some terrific guests on the show. 
you know, Chris Bay, Jay Vidal was on SportsX Radio and Deanna Perrazzo. And uh, I guess we can announce now that the TV taping, first TV taping at least has aired, that we have new Impact Tag Team Champions as Chris Bay and Ace Austin. They're now known as ABC, but of course part of the Bullet Club, are now the Impact World Tag Team Champions as they dethroned the Motor City Machine Guns at those tapings. So, Joe, you got to be pretty proud to see Chris Bay bringing home an Impact World title. Yeah, we're already in talks of uh, having the Bullet Club challenge for the FSW tag titles. Whoa, really? Hmm. Yeah, we're, 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 you know, Chris has to get uh, to John Morrison at the Mecca, but we're talking about stuff for the uh, anniversary and possibly in April. And... Yes, the, the Bullet Club should be coming to FSW, hopefully, in the next couple months. Oh, that is awesome. So we'll we'll look forward to hearing that but, or seeing that happen. But, yeah, but big congratulations to Chris Bay as he brings home the Impact World Tag Team Championships. Second, with the second awesome. title in Impact. Yeah. That's division champ, too. Yes, he was, so. Big things happening, and, uh, and of course, the FSW grads just keep on racking it up. So that's pretty awesome. And uh, you know, I, I, Joe, when I, you know, I can only imagine what you're, how you're feeling about seeing these guys. And you get Cecil Sokoa on the show, you know, just at the main events of uh, WWE Raw and SmackDown, and and all these guys that that your company is putting out, doing very well. And you know, and LCF, like I said, just being on AEW, uh, you know, Elevation the other night. Yeah, be feeling good, buddy. Yeah, you know we had Maz on there, uh, Rochelle Riveter. So, you know whether it's Ring of Honor tapings, it looks like you know we're gonna have a few of our people on there. I heard Maz was down there for that taping. That's why she wasn't uh, on the more recent AEW stuff because she was uh, not in AEW. I'm an Impact. Because she's generally been utilized when Impact's been in Vegas. But she was down in Florida. And I didn't see her being used on there. But, you know, hopefully she's getting a contract. Yeah, so just all sorts of great stuff. And, you know, if if you live here in Las Vegas, or even if you're outside of it, you, you know, keep an eye on what's going on. You know, Brian, I mean, the coverage that you're doing with Las Vegas wrestling scene, you know, this has got to be fun for you, too, because these are people that you've, covered for a long time that you're seeing step up and step up and step up and you know it's got to feel good to oh it's very covering these guys yeah it's very exciting um you know solo sokoa thinking about him too uh, it's just really you know he went into nxt it was kind of a quiet when he started there but once he got onto the main roster just just exploded i mean he just looks like he belongs across the same uh but i'm I kind of started covering as Cross was on his way out. <clears throat> but seeing Sokoa, seeing Chris Bay, I remember when, when Chris won the X Division title, we had the watch, there was the watch party at FSW Arena. Uh, and you really kind of got how connected he was to the city with that when he won that title. Um, so it's really cool to see it. It really is. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it, it is an incredibly exciting time in professional wrestling. And we're going to keep covering it all for you here on the Mark Oak Show. Speaking of which, I think we'll head into our first break. I think that's a good spot to kind of close that out. And when we come back, we got a pay-per-view tonight, too, as AEW Revolution is going to be hitting. This is going to be a very interesting evening as well. It's a good card. Yeah, great card. So we're going to break that all down for you, give, us our, give you our predictions on that. And uh, mention maybe a little bit about what's going on on the road to WrestleMania as well. So, man, I'll tell you, just unreal what's going on right now in the world of pro wrestling. So we're going to step back, take a break. And when we return, Joe DeFalco, Brian Ronovich, and myself, more of the best in pro wrestling news and entertainment on the Mark Hoke Show on KDON 101.5 FM. So stick around. We'll be right back.
This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. All right, let's talk some more wrestling, shall we? The best in pro wrestling news and entertainment on the planet, the Mark Hoke Show. I want to thank you for being with us, Brian Ronovich and Joe DeFalco. On the big board as we roll on here, just more and more wrestling stuff happening. It is just crazy. Absolutely crazy, to say the least. Wait, right, Brian? Yes, absolutely crazy. Yes. And, <laughs> uh, you know, I was just thinking about the toy show today, too. If, you, if you're looking for some great um, uh, memorabilia, they had some, and just, you know, action figures and all that kind of crazy stuff. Man, I saw some wrestling buddies over there. Yeah, yeah. That there was a Hulk rules wrestling buddy. Oh, I got I a mean, uh, Dino Dino Marks who's going to write our article about that show. He sent me a picture of an Iron Sheik uh, wrestling figure, one of the big, the old ones that looked like it was a big one. And he said this is going to be the focus of my recap. So I'm interested. So he was clearly involved with that stuff, too. Oh, yes. Very nice. Very nice. Joe, you should come over and do some shopping this morning. Uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> VegasToyShow.com. Uh, I'm not really a collectible guy, you know. It's yeah, like same. it's back in the day, I got a lot of memorabilia from the uh, Nitro Grill. Uh, the WCW Nitro Grill. So that's the one thing I do have uh, a lot of possession. It's uh, I got a hard hat that was signed by like Macho Man and Hulk Hogan and Kevin Nash, and then later on I actually had uh, Bret Hart sign it. Nice. Hey Joe, how are you with uh, FSW memorabilia? Do you keep stuff like that? Do you have like a room with all the posters or things like that? I have a lot of the posters, but it's just, it, it's difficult because, you know, in the past, we used to have the really nice posters that we would uh, have put up at, say, Sam's Town. Right. And usually Mikey or somebody else would snatch them before we would get them. So I do have a decent amount of them. Uh, Chris Bay actually gave me, which is now a prized possession, a signed Micro Brawlers uh, figure. And it's like, you know, that that's, that's cool. like a proud papa there, you know. It's <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Well, Watching, you know, watching Chris from, you know, his his early beginnings and his struggles, you know, and and keeping the power on, you know, and it's like, you know, look at him now. He's he's got his own figure, so you know that's pretty cool. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. There's a ton of stuff to check out over there, so make sure you stop on by. Maybe if you maybe you message me, I might have a ticket or two sitting around. Just saying. So you can message me on Twitter at Mark Oak Show, and if you want to go. Maybe I can uh, swing it for you today. Well, we've got AEW Revolution tonight, too. And by the way, I'll be out at the Santa Fe Casino at the movie theater there watching AEW Revolution. So if you want to come out. Can you get people for that? Yeah. I mean, it's not a massive crowd or anything, but there's, there's people in there. I mean, you know, back in the back in the day, we used to do it at uh, they would do the WWE pay per views, and it was the Texas Station, and I, I mm. believe that we used to go down to. Yeah, it's it's fun as I well mean, as Sam's Town. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, they get about twenty yes. or thirty people in there. Sam's Town's been doing it for years. Uh, Sam's Town still do that? They don't do that anymore. Do no, they no, they, but they, did they it for don't a long do anything time. after the pandemic. Oh yeah, yeah after that's the pandemic, true. they stopped doing everything. Yeah, that's but, but that's how we first would get w, uh, FSW kind of known. I'd go there. I would host the event at Sam's Town, and, uh, you know, they'd play our videos because they were willing to work with us then because having me host it, it saved them. They used to have some radio guy do it who they used to pay. So they didn't pay me, but, you know, we got to talk in front of three, 400 people that were there watching the pay-per-view and hopefully get them to come to uh, – an FSW show. There you go. Well, we'd love to, if so. If you want to come say hi to me and hang out, and you know, I think it's I think the tickets are like twenty five bucks, and you know, you get the pre show and everything. It's I think the doors open at four, so you get to sit around the movie theater and watch the show and and actually be with people as opposed to sitting at home. Mm. So it's a lot of fun. They only have to pay. They only have to pay twenty five bucks to hang out with you. That's a pretty good deal. That's not bad. That's, yeah, that's a steal. Hey, I'm cheap. Yeah, man. I yeah. come. I come real easy these days. 
But <laughs> anyway, I, but we do have AEW Revolution tonight, and uh, we would certainly encourage you if you want to bet on some wrestling, you can go to betonline.ag. Of course, the first thing you got to do is you have to go to our website at markhokeshow.com. Giant banners all over the place. Click on that, put in the code BOL1000, and you can make a deposit of up to $1,000 and get a 50% matching bonus. Mm. So not only am I cheap when it comes to coming to see me, I'm also handing you 500 bucks. It's kind of nice. So go to markhokeshow.com, click on the banner, and uh, make your first deposit, and you can bet on AEW Revolution, Rev- WrestleMania, Whatever you want. It's pretty fun. So check it out. And we're going to go through those betting odds right now as we take a look at this card tonight. Yeah, got, got, I think it got a little overshadowed with some of the, the bloodline stuff and elimination chamber. But I think we're we're in gear now. This is gonna this is gonna be a great card tonight. So let's take a look at what is going on with AEW Revolution this evening as we pull the card up. Now we got a little tag team match to open up with John Silver and Alex Reynolds taking on Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta. The only thing interesting about that one, maybe we might have a little Wheeler Yuta Claudio blow up on this one. So we'll see what happens there. Any guys, any fast thoughts on that? Brian's shaking his head. No, not Joe really. doesn't either. No. So. I was going to say, not, not, not particularly. It's not a match that, like, I'm like, oh, man, what a feud this is. I'm excited about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, then we get Mark Briscoe's debut hmm. on an AEW pay-per-view. He's going to be teamed with the Lucha Brothers against uh, Ari Davari and the Varsity Athletes. That's Josh Woods and Tony Nese. So, you know, it should be a, a pretty quick match. But uh, but it'll be good to see Mark on the show. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's about time. Yeah, so that'll be that'll be fun. So we get a six man match there. Now we get the final burial match, and I don't know if we're gonna. This is gonna be turning into a you know, like a buried alive match or something. We're kind of getting that opinion there. Um, but we've got Christian Cage against a Jungle Boy, Jack Perry. So we're going to uh, – let me pull the odds on that. Uh, Jungle Boy Jack Perry is a minus 1,000. Uh, Kristen Cage a plus 500. Is there any chance Christian gets a win on this, guys? I think so. Uh, prob- I don't think so. You don't think there's so? no reason why he should, you know. But, you know, to be honest with you, when I heard final burial match, I thought LAX was going to come back and then they were going to finally bury him. But uh, <laughs> is this, is it, I guess so, I'm incorrect in that. So you think this is this is it? Well, I guess, yeah, final burial. It really should just be him winning it. But you never know. Sometimes heels close it in a uh, feud and it's a surprise. So you never really know. Well, yeah. It's a, That's it's kind of my exciting point. exciting when they make. When they make the twenty-five-year-old lose to the fifty-year-old, so yeah, that's you. You, you got to have you know, J- J- Jungle Boy is the guy that that's supposed to be the future of the company. Cage Christian's been gone forever. He's going to come back, and it's like, okay, now we're going to reignite the feud by having a final burial match. It's like I, 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 you know, it. It's another one that doesn't excite me in any way. They, they stopped for how long to now restart it and it's like going right to that it's like eh, yeah is it really necessary yeah i guess it's just kind of tie up that loose end to get it well, over with. and so. and a burial match something like that to me should fit the characters in the match at least you know it always worked with undertaker or kane or man like you could yeah. it made sense this these neither one of them doesn't make sense yeah and um, it'll be a fun match to watch though I mean, you know, we got to remember that, too. It's two, two pretty good performers. So we'll see how that one goes. Uh, Chris Jericho taking on Ricky Starks. Pretty good buildup on this one, guys. They've been uh, nailing these promos for this show. And uh, when we take a look at the odds on that, we are looking at Ricky Starks as the favorite. Minus 300. Chris Jericho plus 200. Uh, I would have to imagine Ricky Starks is probably going over. But, yeah, you never know. Uh, Joe, what are your thoughts on... The Starks Jericho feud, which is, you know, it's been pretty decent. Well, Jericho kind of won the match uh, early on, so if Ricky Starks is a guy that you 
really are looking toward the future, he, he's got to get the win back. And 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 Jericho's been a guy who's who who seems to not let his ego get in the way of putting over the, the younger talent. So if he's going to lose to that action Andretti guy, there's no reason why Ricky Stark shouldn't get the win tonight. Do you think with if Starks gets the win, you you see him getting the you know push towards another title, or do you see anything like that? Well, yeah, they got the guys in the mix. You know, I think Ricky Starks is fine. I think there's better guys in that situation, but Tony Khan has proven he's kind of gone out of the box on who he's deciding that he wants to push this week, and then next week. He may not even have him on TV again, so it's it, it's really hard to predict right. uh, what Tony Khan is, is thinking. It's like, so you didn't use Brian Cage for like nine months, but now they're the six-man tag champs, but now he's on every show again. It's kind of like, oh, okay, I guess we like Brian Cage this month. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So at the next one on the card, we've got uh, – these are the kind of the tightest betting odds on this one too is the – trios championship match between the elite Kenny Omega, Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson, taking on the house of black. That is Malachi black, Brody King and buddy Matthews. I think this is going to, this, this one has a chance to be kind of a card stealer. I think this is, you know, obviously six great performers and you know, I kind of like, I would really like to honestly see the house of black get over on this one. So, but uh, let me take a look at those odds real quick because I believe it was at uh, Elite is minus 170, House of Black 130. So, guys, what are your thoughts on the Elite against the House of Black? Let me start with Joe on that. Well, the House of Black need to get the win, you know. They've been in and out for, for months. But, the, again, the problem is are, are these guys back full time? It's... It, it, it's mind-boggling how you know you're around, you're not around, you're around, and, and the, the, the consistency isn't always there. But you know the young bucks and Kenny Omega, they don't need the win. These these guys need the win, and you know it's the perfect opportunity for them them to get jump started. You know back into you know a big time program. Yeah, Brian, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, the House of Black, it's been, you know, we have Malachi taking a little time away. Buddy took a little time away, and now these guys are back in action, and, you know, looks like they're getting that push. Uh, I, You know, I have a feeling this could be an interesting feud if they really do this match right today. Yeah, I, I, w- I, I agree with Joe. I think House of Black should win the titles. I mean, at least from the standpoint of you don't really – there's no need to keep putting the elite over like that because they are uh, a win over them by themselves is a big win. You don't, they don't have to have titles for a win over them to matter. So to me, I feel like you don't need to keep the belts on them. You could put it on somebody who you're trying to really build with. I mean, Malachi black is, is supremely talented. And a lot of the talk has always been like, well, he's never really gotten an opportunity. Well, I think this is really should be, it like let's see what we have like let's see where you can go with this i'd i'd like to see him get it yeah and i you know these three guys i mean they're kind of built for this trios championship that's why they're you know i i think these guys were really brought in i mean obviously malachi black a great singles performer but i you know you just feel like that when the these three got introduced that this was the purpose you know so i would really like to see them get over today so you know maybe putting a little little scratch on the house of black might not be a bad idea brody king and malachi black to me are a perfect fit i mean he's yeah. he may it just makes perfect sense it's the, i like that group together yeah i i think they're a lot especially of fun, those so. two yeah so we'll see what happens on that one but the, like i said tightest betting odds on the big board for AEW revolution of course i'm mark hoke along with brian ronovich and joe defalco on the mark hoke show here on k dawn Going through AEW Revolution. Now we've got a ladies three-way match for the women's championship. Jamie Hayer, the champ, taking on Soraya and Ruby Soho. Of course, the mini invasion angle with uh, Tony Storm and Soraya. You know, saying that we're going to come in and take over AEW. And Ruby Soho caught in the middle. So they've made this a little intriguing. But according to the betting odds on this, 
And not so much as uh, Jamie Hader is a massive favorite in this. They've got her at minus 1,200 with Soraya, a plus 400, and Ruby Soho, a plus 650. But, you know, so I, I don't know. I mean, but I, I'm just wondering if uh, I think the question in this match is more what's Ruby going to do as opposed to anything else. Uh, Joe, I'll start with you on this one. Uh, any chance Hader loses the title today? Oh, and it looks like uh, we lost Joe there for a second. It was muted. Uh, oh, there we go. There Joe. we go. There's, there's I was Joe. saying, you know, as if the other two have seen the betting odds and they want to make some money, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> they can go off script and they could, uh, you know, put put Ruby over at plus 650. You know, she won't need another job if she can put over <laughs> Very nice. Uh, Brian, what, what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I think it it seems like it would go, you know, according to plan with with Jamie winning it, but Soraya, it's it almost kind of makes sense if she wins to me the you know her to win the title just with this invasion angle that gives you a dominant position if that's where you're trying to go. So, you know, you never know, it could be a little uh swerve there. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of uh, curious think, about it too. I was gonna- yeah, go ahead, Joe. I was going to say, I, ju- I just don't think, uh, you know, she's gotten the reaction or the effect that people expected. It was like, oh, Paige is finally back. I I, I don't think it's really been that big a deal, to well, be honest with you. And I think they over – that. that's one thing that AEW seems to always do. They overestimate anybody who they bring in from WWE and what their value is going to be. Well, and she got off to kind of a rocky start with those promos, too. If you remember that, it was – and she was really nervous. It had been a long time back, and I and I think that that really had hurt her more than I think we expected. I mean, I, 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 you would think that there would have been a little more leeway on there, but I think everyone thought, well, you know, Saray is back. You know, she's going to be perfect, and she wasn't. And you know, it just hasn't quite carried yet. Now, maybe winning the title will would take care of that. So. You know, Jamie Hayter's definitely way over, but uh, you know, maybe we'll see if we get an upset tonight. Well, with with Soraya too, I, my thought is, you know, if you're if you're a fan, sometimes there's a lack of investment if you don't think they're going to be around very long. You know, how long is she is she going to be there? Like just from my thought process, so that could be why maybe some of the fans didn't invest in it right, invest in her return right away, just because you don't know how long. You know, is she going to be there for two, three, four, five years, or is it going to be six months, nine months? Right. That, that's a very good point. All right. So we're going to step back and take a break. And when we come back, we will continue on with AEW Revolution. There's still about four matches left to go, including, of course, what should be a massive main event. This is going to be a lot of fun tonight with MJF and Brian Danielson. And then, of course, when we get into our second hour, the gang's all here. We are excited because we are going to have lights, camera, faction. They they have evaded the studio. The belts are here. This is going to be a blast. We're going to be looking forward to talking to those guys in our second hour as well. So stick around. We're going to have a lot more here on the Mark Hoke Show on KDWN 101.5 FM. So stick around, gang. We'll be right back. Tired of the same boring food when you're out for breakfast or lunch? I'm Mark Hoke, and I have an idea for a different place to go with unique food you're sure to enjoy, and that's Unique Eats. Take some time out of your busy day and stop on in to Unique Eats, featuring celebrity chef Dominic Tedesco and his friendly staff. Whether it's a great start to your day with one of Unique Eats' amazing omelets, for lunch with his incredible sandwiches, pasta, and award-winning pizzas, you'll be in for a fantastic dining experience that won't break the bank. Unique Eats also features a smoothie bar and full vegetarian menu as well. Plus, if you need catering, you can count on Unique Eats no matter what the occasion. So what are you waiting for? Get on over to Unique Eats at 3100 South Durango, Suite 100, open daily until 3 p.m. Call them at 702-992-3038 or visit UniqueEatsLV.com 
for their full menu and catering info. Break out of the same old routine and have a great meal at Unique Eats today. You're listening to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Vegas, The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Now, here again is Mark Hoke. And we are back on The Mark Hoke Show on KDWN 101.5 FM. We are the talk of Las Vegas, the best in pro wrestling and news and entertainment. Just having a great time in and by the way, I feel like I I need to have dressed up a little bit more because Lights, Camera, Faction is in here, and the guys are looking sharp. Yeah, they are. I mean, champions. I mean, they, they, they're they dressed control like everything champions. right now. They got all the gold in here, man. I, I should have worn a suit. I feel like I'm in the presence of greatness. <laughs> so we're we're gonna have some fun well, with these greatness, guys. Greatness was in the match last night. Yeah, it was an awesome time. But we'll we'll, we'll save that for the second hour. But I just want to okay. warn everybody. That the, the the sharp dressed men are here, Joe. Do they dress like yeah, this all the time? You must be paying them pretty well. Don't don't get their head any bigger than it already is. <laughs> hey, doing what I got to do, man. I'm, I'm the I'm the hype man here. All right, let's get back to uh, AEW Revolution. Uh, we've got four more matches on the card. We didn't get to talk about yet, so let's run these down. The fourth match in this series: John Moxley taking on Hangman Adam Page. Moxley just bleeding all over the place, boys. It just never seems to stop. But we have a Texas death match between the two of them, which means all hell's going to break loose tonight. I don't know what more they have in the bag of tricks, but we're going to find out this evening. And Paige is the betting favorite on this one. Uh, he is at a minus 650. Mox plus 375. So everybody's thinking Paige is going to go over on this. Brian, your thoughts on this one as we... Might be finally getting the blow off on this uh, feud between Paige and Moxley. Well, that would pro- that would probably be good. It's hard for me to get excited about death matches with John Moxley. I just it seems like all his matches are like that. It, you know, I just don't have the enthusiasm for him like I would if it was somebody who didn't normally have him. Him bleeding, him having stuff like that. That's just kind of it feels like a normal thing with me. Yeah, you know, Joe. I, aside from the match, I, I'm curious to get your thoughts on that. That we we do see John bleeding a lot in matches, and to me, you got to be careful with that. To me, that's a tool that you use. That you know, I don't think you should be just you know pulling it out of the tool belt all the time like he does. Uh, you know, I'm curious to see how you feel about how much Mox has been bleeding in matches, and uh, you know that just maybe don't need it. Well, I don't think it is necessary. I don't think it's really necessary on television shows to mm-hmm. to begin with. You know, if it's in a big pay per view match, and and again, you water it down. It's like there's a time where everybody has to curse, and it's like, well, when you're going to use those the big F word and things like that, if you use it over and over and over again, when you use it, it doesn't mean anything. And if you don't use it, and all of a sudden it comes out of nowhere, it's going to have a lot more meaning. And it's the same thing with the blood. It's like you see it all the time. But, you know, for the match, it's it's the cycle of wrestling. You know, John Moxley's no longer the champion. So since he's no longer the champion, now it's time for a guy of his stature to elevate back Adam Page, who they've decided that... They lulled him for a while, and, and now it's going to be his time again. So, you know, if the betting odds are that, there's a there's a reason why in wrestling, compared to any sport, that the odds get totally out of control. Because, you know, there's a lot of ins on who is actually going to win a match, and... At minus six fifty, you you can bet pretty sure that John Moxley's not winning that match. Now, once in a while, there's the the shockers like Lesnar and Undertaker, where you could have made a lot of money, but generally, you see uh, as the weeks progress, where a line might be minus two to one, all of a sudden, two days before the show, it's now seven to one. Well, obviously, the information's out there. It's it is wrestling. We can't fool ourselves right. that you know it's predetermined. And if somebody gets you know gets you know if they get the script, you know, like in boxing and in, <laughs> and in football, 
Because, oh. you know, we have now learned that everything is fixed because I saw it on Facebook, so it has to be real. Wow. All right. Smo Joe and Wardlow for the TNT Championship. Uh, and we're, it's good to see Wardlow back in the mix here, but uh, he's really trying to find his momentum again. They've got Wardlow at minus 1,000, Smo Joe plus 500. Um, we've got about two minutes, so we got to get through all this. But uh, real fast thoughts, uh, Brian, on Smo Joe and Wardlow. I love Wardlow. I've been following his career for several years. Um, I would love to see him win the title. I have no idea which way it's going to go, but I would like to, to see him. I, I think he could do some really good things. Joe, fast thoughts on Samoa Joe and Wardlow. Yeah, I think it's disappointing that they just make uh, Samoa Joe as great as he is a placeholder. It's like, let's get some momentum behind uh, Wardlow coming back. But Again, I, we, we've seen from day one that uh, Tony Khan is really enamored with Wardlow. So now that he's back and he's fully healthy, and according to those betting odds, it seems like the, they're going to go right back to him being the champ. All right. Uh, two more. We don't have much time here, but the tag the tag match, we got a four-way match between the Guns, the acclaimed Jeff Jarrett, Jay Lethal, and somehow Orange Cassidy and Danhausen found their way into this match. Guns are the favorite at minus 400. Uh, boy, it looks like the guns are going to hang on to these titles. There's rumor FTR is going to come back and get them. Uh, real fast, Brian, uh, any are you excited about this? Because I'm a little disappointed now with the way this is set up. I, I'm not a huge fan of four way tag matches. I was just recently talking about that, so we'll we'll see how this goes. I, I don't really have much of an opinion other than I don't really like four way tag matches. All right, Joe, real quick. You know, other than FSW four-way tag matches, I'm not excited about four-way tag matches. <laughs> and you know what? That last night's four-way tag was excellent. That was and great, that was what I was just talking about before this one. That so. was a great one last night. Okay, so we'll have to carry over real quick the MJF-Brian Danielson match into the next hour because I uh, want to make sure we have a little time to talk about that. And, uh, you know, speaking of four-way tag matches, we just had Lights, Camera, Faction, the boys uh, in yeah, that Yeah, there one. was breaking news to. Breaking news tonight, uh, MJF's ex fiance is going to be in Danielson's corner. Is that rumor true? I don't know. That would be interesting. <laughs> they were getting a little, if you didn't see that promo the other night, that got a little, uh, or that got a little uh, nasty, to say the least. So, guys, we're wrapping up our number one here on the Mark Hoke Show. We want to thank you for joining us. We're going to be coming back with our number two here in just a few minutes. So, I want you to stick around and the lights camera faction guys from FSW are in the house. There's gold everywhere. We've got briefcases. I I don't know, Brian. Uh, you might get uh, you might get nailed with something in there. But uh, sorry about that. But yeah, so this is gonna be a lot of fun. So everybody, hang out. We'll be back with hour number two on the Mark Hoke Show when we return. We'll be right back. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show. Like us on Facebook at The Mark Hoke Show. And visit MarkHokeShow.com to keep up with everything happening with the show. And remember to check out all of our archive shows on YouTube at The Mark Hoke Show. And download our podcasts at MarkHokeShow.Podbean.com and all your favorite podcast outlets. So join The Mark Hoke Show family today and thanks for listening.